Hello, everybody. Today's class is on reading skills, intermediate level reading skills. I'm going to wait for some more people to join before we get started for today. Perfect. Hey, kids, 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 kids. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, or if that's even your name. Kids, because KTZ, O U N E T. Bye. Bye. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Fine, and you? Good. Is that your real name? Hey, what's that? I'm in the class. Uh, I didn't hear you well. I said, is that your real name? Uh, I am uh, Kiznet. Kiznet. Okay, where are you from? From Algeria. From where? From Algeria. Algeria. Okay, cool, cool. Awesome. Welcome to class. So today's class today's class is on reading skills. Okay? Intermediate level reading skills. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna wait for some more, more people to come before we get started for today. Okay? Okay. Alright. So yeah, my name is Kevin. I'm from New York, New York City, and I'll be the teacher for today. Okay? Okay. There we go. Sunny Ismail. Ismail, what's up? Hi, how are you? Hi. How are you? Fine, thanks. Uh, good, good. And Sonny, what's up, buddy? Hey, I'm good, teacher. How about good. you? I'm just waking up. Oh, <laughs> seems like that. Yeah. Well, it's 7 a.m. over here. Okay, where are you, teacher, from? In my bed. <laughs> I'm in my bed. <laughs> okay. Oh, which country are you from? Are you from US too? Yes, yes, I'm from New York. Okay. Yeah. From Brooklyn, New York. Have you heard of that place? <laughs> You're in Washington right now. No? I'm in where? In Georgetown, Russia. Uh. Yeah. That's why I go to school. I go to Georgetown. Uh. Yeah. That's why I go to school, but I am not there. I'll, oh, yeah. I'm, in, I'm in Argentina right now. I'm studying abroad, and I'll be back at Georgetown next semester. So I'll be back there in January. Okay. Yeah. But, <laughs> yep, I'm in Argentina until... December 15th, so I have about three weeks left before I go back home. Of course. Nope. So, okay, so like I was saying, today's class is on reading skills, intermediate levels. So what we're going to do is we're going to read. What we're going to do first is read um, a few really short passages, and we're going to be drawing conclusions. We're going to answer questions that ask you to draw conclusions 
or figure out vocabulary meanings from the words, okay? Or draw context for the words, okay? So, let's start, let's start with this. All right, can everyone see this? Yes. Yes? Okay. Awesome. So first, uh, so we're going to answer these first four questions. Each of them has a little passage before it. And we're going to answer the one that we think is the question that we, the answer that we think is the best response. Okay? All right. So the first one. Kim wants to drive her three kids and their two friends to a soccer game. The problem is that her shiny new SUV only has room for five passengers, including the driver. Kim misses her old eight-passenger SUV, but she's still thankful that, it, that the new one gets much better gas mileage. Which of the following statements here are false? According to what I just said. Everybody understand what, what I'm asking for? No. This is. Uh, that. So I'm asking which one of these statements are false from what I just read up here. Hmm. So let's read it again. Kim wants to drive her three kids and their two friends to the soccer game. So how many people does she want to drive in total? The the first one is C. Five. Five. The false one is C. Kim won't be able to take her kids to talk again. Everybody agree with that? Everybody agree with that? Yes. He yes. wants to drive her three kids and their two friends to the scooter. Yeah, he won't be able to take the, her kids to the scooter. Sasro game. Yeah. So is that so is that false or true? Is this statement false or true? This is true. This is true. Okay, so what is the question asking for? The question is asking like false. So if that's true, that's not the answer. Okay. We're looking for what's false. Okay, we are looking for the false. Okay. Kim the first one is false. Yes. So Kim's new SUV can carry five people, including the driver, so it can carry six people. Okay? So Kim's new vehicle, Kim's new vehicle is meant to carry six people. Okay, does everybody see that? Because it says the problem is that her shiny new SUV 
only has room for five passengers, including the driver. Well, no, then that means that if it includes the driver, that it's that this one is true as well, right? Five passengers, including the driver. Right? Do you want to understand what I'm asking for, or is it is this a little too complicated? All right, let's try the next one. Okay. Okay. Kareem had five hundred dollars to invest. He was considering a number of options. I'd really like to buy gold bars with the money and hide them in a big hole in our yard, he said. Five hundred dollars won't buy much gold, his father pointed out. You could put all the gold in your shoe and never notice that it's there. That takes all the fun out of it, Kareem groaned. I just won't buy any gold at all. When Kareem's father suggested that he deposit the money in his new savings account at the local bank, Kareem quietly stated that that could work. What did Kareem want to buy? Gold. Gold. Okay. So, what did he want to buy? A small gold coin or gold bars? Which one is it? Gold bars. Gold bars. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. From the selection, we can tell that Kareem. What can we tell from that? That he will not be able to, to buy a gold bar. What are these choices? He don't have enough money. What is it? He don't have enough money to buy a gold bar. Look at the look at the choices. Which one of these answers are is valid? You. Okay. What do we think the answer is? Mm. Look at the last part. When Kareem's father suggested that he deposited the money in his new savings account at the local bank, Kareem quietly stated that to work. So what can we tell from this election? He would buy nothing. Yeah, look at the choices. Which one of these which one of the choices here are the it's the correct response? Look at the choices. Oh mm. The B wasn't gonna be there. Uh, might decide to put his money into his bank account. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So this one now. Scientists in Australia have discovered a planet that seems to be a solid diamond. They estimate it to be about five times the size of Earth. The diamond planet is four thousand light years away. So don't plan on traveling there anytime soon. <laughs> Which one of the following do you think scientists needed in order to make this discovery? Scientists in Australia have discovered a planet that seems to be a solid diamond. Estimate it to be five times the size of Earth. Uh, it estimate it to be the five times the Earth size of Earth. So let's look at the look at the choices. 
Which one of the following do you think scientists needed in order to make this discovery to find this planet that's so far away, five times the size of Earth? Okay, so first of all, it's in space. So a smartphone probably wouldn't work because a smartphone is a phone that you use to call people. Right? How about, the, yeah, either they would be A, o, a or D. Microscope or the radio telescope. Okay, perfect. So we have these two choices. So what is a microscope? What does a microscope do? Uh, through which we can zoom the things and can uh, see in the, I mean, many times of the sizes. Exactly. So a microscope is something you use to see something micro, meaning small. Okay? And it's usually used with like seeing things like bacteria or um, or cells. And the minor okay? things. So minor things, exactly. So do you, so what do you think? Do you think that you would use a radio telescope to look into space? What is radio telescope? Because I don't understand the meaning for this. A radio telescope. What? What's a telescope? Telescope. I think. Uh, that. Uh, just to see the planet. That is called telescope. I. Think. That is called bioscope or telescope. I'm confused. So okay. So let's see. A radio telescope is um like a directional radio antenna used in radio astronomy. Oh, got it. Then it's a A. Yeah, A is the answer, a. a microscope, yeah. Perfect. 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 Good job. Okay. So now let's go to the next one from outer space. From outer space. Foxnews.com reports that Dr. Richard B. Hoover, an astrobiologist at NASA, believes that he has found the fossils of bacteria in meteorites. In other words, he claims to have found traces of life from outer space. Not surprisingly, his claim is controversial. Many scientists do not accept that Dr. Hoover has come to the correct conclusion from what he has observed. Therefore, he has invited over 5,000 scientists to review his work and to publish their comments. What is bacteria? Bacteria are a what? Form of life. A form of life. Perfect. Good job. When something is controversial, people... Get stick from it. No, not get sick from it. It's not. It's not a disease. Controversy. Okay, people have a strong disagreement about it. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Doctor Hoover seems confident that his research that his research will be proven correct because. He has invited, uh, what was that? What is it? Yeah, he invited 5,000. What was the answer? Uh, exactly. Yeah. He invited many scientists to look at his work, so he's confident um, because he invited this many people. So, that, so this one is the correct response because we see how many people he invited to, to his presentation, right? So based on the reading selection that we just read, which of these statements are true? No one believes that Dr. Hover has made an important Perfect. Perfect, exactly. No one believes Dr. Hoover has made an important discovery because it says here his claim is controversial. Many scientists do not accept that Dr. Hoover has come to the correct conclusion from what he has observed. Okay? All right. All right. So now we're going to work with drawing conclusions from a passage that we read. Okay? Okay. 
All right, how's everyone doing? Everyone, everyone on the same page? Yes. Dry yes. Okay. Oh, Louisa, hi. <laughs> hi. What's up? Nothing. How are you? Good, good. All right, so let's start with this. Luke is very competitive and loves to win when he plays sports. Kyler doesn't take sports all that seriously. So when their tennis singles match was over, it was no surprise that both boys were in a good mood, especially Luke. Which of these statements is most likely true? Uh, Luke won the match. Perfect, exactly. So Luke won the match because he says Luke is very competitive and he loves to win. Kyle doesn't really care. But they both played a match. They're both in a good mood, especially Luke. So that means that Luke won the match. If they didn't win the match, Luke would be very upset. Okay? Leslie's main playlist has 40 rock songs, 15 rap songs, and one country song. It also contains 12 classical instrumentals. Which statement is probably not true? Where's your favorite music is content? Perfect, perfect, exactly. She only has one country song in compared to her 40 rock songs and 15 rap songs. Okay. All right, number three. I think you like your present, Scott. You'll still be able to use it for at least the next couple of months before the weather gets too warm. It can be a lot of fun, especially if you take a lesson or two first. Remember, people are often injured by using these things if they don't know what they're doing. So Scott's new present is a what? What is it? What's a rifle? Oh, sorry. I'm not looking at the chat box. Chris, you can talk, right? Or is your thing not working? Oh, I guess it's not working. Okay. Well, yes, Chris, that's the right answer. He put it in the chat box. Um, snowboard. Okay, so a rifle is a gun. All right. A rifle is a type of gun. A tennis racket is used for tennis. Snow shovel is what you use to pick up the snow. All right, and a snowboard is uh, what Scott got as a present. So the description is that you'll be able to use it before the weather gets warm. So it's obviously something you use in the winter. Um, and you don't really need a lesson to to be able to pick up snow with a shovel. It just is what it is. With snowboarding, you may need a lesson or two. Okay? And you can probably get injured um, from it. All right. So now let's go to the last one. Brad put a load of clothes into the washing machine. An hour later, he unloaded the damp clothes and put them into the dryer. Later, he unloaded the clothes and carried them upstairs in a basket. To his dismay, Brad noticed that the load of laundry just didn't smell nearly as fresh as usual. One of the following is the reason why. Which one is it? Brad has forgotten to put detergent into the machine. See? See? Perfect. 
Well, none of the damn clothes put them into jail. Everybody agree with that? Yes? Hey, Moham. Chris, you can talk. I can see your thing moving. Yeah, I fixed it. Oh, okay, I got it. All right. Where are you from, Chris? New York. Why are you here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. These questions are pretty hard, though. Really? Okay, this is weird. Um, <laughs> are you just here to to be here or what? I'm 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 bored. You're bored. It's seven a.m. Well, actually, no. It's like no. Three a.m. Five thirty. Five thirty. Where are you from in New York? Endicott. Endicott. Okay, well, I'm from the city. I'm from Brooklyn. Um, do you really want to be here? <laughs> huh? What? Okay. All right, so we'll just keep going. I'm gonna leave you. All right. So this one is vocabulary, meaning some context. Um, do you have Chris? Do you have my the other screen on while this is on? Because I hear an echo from you. Ah, uh, I'll fix so. it. Yeah, just X out of that. Okay. Vocabulary meaning some context. So we're going to use the context to help determine the meaning of each of the highlighted words. Okay? First one. In the early 1600s, a dangerous trip across the Atlantic Ocean was a daunting idea. The Europeans, who would someday be known as the Pilgrims, must have been a very determined and brave group of settlers. A daunting task is one that would what to somebody? What does daunting mean? What does this mean off paper? What was that? Paper. What did you say, Kuznet? I can't really hear you. Maybe eight. Which one? A? Yeah. So what does it mean to tickle? Tickle is like, tickle is, uh, for example, you tickle babies, right? Um, to make them, to make them laugh. Yeah, so, hey, hey Mohammed, what's up? So, tickle, hi Mohammed. So, tickle is not the correct response. That's when you make like a little baby laugh or something. So, what do you think daunting means? Look at the key words in this in this in this paragraph. A dangerous trip across the Atlantic Ocean. Maybe the word uh, like crazy thing. Uh, what was it? Maybe deep. D, exactly. Frighten or intimidate. Perfect, exactly. So it was a danger it was a dangerous trip and it was a daunting idea. Alright, so it was an intimidating idea to be wanting to travel across the Atlantic Ocean. Can you okay. translate this to what? What was that? Can you translate this word? Frightening? Translate, translate daunting. Um No I don't uh what? frighten, intimidate. Oh, uh, so frighten means to scare. Oh, okay. Yeah, fright means to scare. Okay, like something scary. All right, so the next one. The original pilgrims called themselves the saints and referred to others who joined with them for the voyage as the strangers. In this context, original means... What does original mean? First. First, exactly. Exactly. 
Number three. The saints and strangers argued about how they would live in the new world. After much discussion, they came together and signed the Mayflower Compact. What's a compact? The compact was what? An agreement. An agreement. Perfect. An agreement. And the last one. When the pilgrims landed in what is now Massachusetts, they were fearful that the Native Americans would attack them. However, the people that they encountered, the Wampanoag Indians, were a peaceful and generous tribe. To encounter, what does to encounter mean? I think fight. Fight? Not, not exactly. So they were fearful. So when they landed in in uh in Massachusetts, Massachusetts, they were fearful that the Native Americans would attack them from from there. But then when they encountered these people, they found that they were actually a peaceful and generous tribe. So they didn't fight them, did they? Because they were they were peaceful. Peaceful and generous. Generous means they were very nice, very giving people. Peaceful means that they were very very friendly. Okay, and lived at peace. So what do you think to encounter means? Mean? Uh, meet. Meet, exactly. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And we'll do one more. I well, actually have two more. Uh, I'm drawing conclusions. Okay. All right. So this one is on drawing conclusions. A mayor rarely rides to school each morning. He could take the school bus, but prefers to walk the two miles from his home to his, to school. He believes that the walk w wakes him up and improves his learning throughout the day. Which one of these do you think of the answer? Read, read the selection, choose a statement that is most likely true from what I just read. I think B. C. B, B. B or C. Which one do you guys think? Oh. What do you guys think? C, exactly. So, do you guys understand why it's not B? Because he rarely rides to school. Exactly. He rarely rides. It doesn't mean that he never rides. Rarely just means. <laughs> Kevin, what's the mean of uh, Emir values there? Value, that means that he loves learning, he likes to learn. Oh. Okay, so we can see that he likes to learn because he believe they said right here he believes that the walk wakes him up and improves his learning throughout the day. So he cares about his learning. In America, right? you can, uh, the one who uh, who loves learning or like learning all the day values learning. What was that? In America, in the, in uh -huh. the U.S. You call the uh, anyone who want to learn or who love learning and uh, education. You call him values learning. No, no. You would just call. You would just say that they like to learn, or that they value education. There's, there isn't a name for them for people that like to learn. I don't think. Chris, what do you think? Do you think there's a name for people like that? Uh. Yeah. People who like to learn. What do you call it? Like, no, I don't want to say it because it's maybe used as mean. Like what nerd? Like, yeah. Nerd. Uh, well, yeah, I guess. Um, you can use it like, in a mean sense. Yeah, nerd is like. Uh, yeah, you use that in a more of a mean sense. Yeah, like people that yeah. people that just look at like to learn. We use it, nerd. You use nerd too? 
Yes, he studied too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nerds, people who study too much. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that's what you could call them, but not really. Um, all right. So, the next one. Remember Maria. Remember Maria, Mrs. Russo said. You're, you're very allergic to chocolate. Please don't eat any chocolate candy at the Halloween party. Three hours later, Maria was home from the party with a terrible stomachache. I promise you, Mom, Maria groaned. I'll always do what you say from now on. So, which one of these statements are probably true? Maria ate chocolate at the party. Exactly. Beep. Exactly. Perfect. She ate chocolate at the party. In another week, we'll be turning our clocks back one hour. Then it will be almost dark by the time most of us get home from school. It will seem as if we suddenly have less daylight each day. Of course, people aren't actually changing the behavior of the sun or the earth by messing with their clocks. Which one of these are probably true? Yeah, I think C. Exactly. If the sun sets an hour earlier, that means it'll also rise an hour earlier. Okay. Do you have this in the, in the U.S.? In the U.S., you have this? Yes, yes. Uh, it's called daylight savings time. Okay, okay. Uh, Jordan, we have like this, but uh, whereas I am working here in Saudi Arabia, we don't have it like this. All, all, all uh, the days the same, uh, the same uh, time. All the days are the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the U.S. Just, oh, yeah. Is, I think the U.S. is probably the but only you, country but, that does that. I'm not sure. But I, but I think uh, America, yani, don't have to to save anything. Uh huh. Saving, don't have to what? Saving. No, this is. I think this is. I think this is for saving money, not for saving time. Yeah, it was. I think it was started to like. It was started back in the eighteen hundreds for something. I forget for like money, to for money issues or something like that. I'm not really sure. The story behind daylight savings time. But yes, it exists. This is this is okay. began. This is began at uh, the Second War, Second World War. No, I think it started before that. No, the, the German, uh, I, I think, kept that. Alright, Wikipedia time. Hold on. Yeah, I'm doing that too. <laughs> uh, so it was first implemented during the First World War. The first or the second? First. First? Okay. You correct me. <laughs> Justification and rationale. 1918? Yes. Yes. So justification. Most people's schedules are not governed by the movements of the earth in relation to the sun. For example, work, school, and transport schedules will generally begin at exactly the same time at all times of the year, regardless of the position of the sun. However, in non-equatorial regions, so in places like North America, England, and all those, place, all those other places that are really far from the equator, the total number of hours of sunlight in a day will vary a great deal between autumn and winter, spring and summer. So in places where there's more, where there's more different, where there's different seasons, the total number of hours of daylight varies more than, more than places like on the equator, like in the Caribbean or Africa or, okay. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, Benjamin so, Franklin. Yeah. If standard time is applied year-round, 
a significant portion of the longer sunlight hours will fall in the early morning while there may still be a significant period of darkness in the evening. So daylight saving time is just a way to balance out the number of daylight hours for everybody in general. We're doing the same here. What is that? Uh, we do it last year. You guys do that there too? Uh, yes, but last, last year. Now we finished doing it. Oh, uh, okay. So what, you guys stopped doing it? Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Where where is Armenia located on the map? And let me let me look that up. Hold on. Europe, I think. West Europe, or yes, East Europe. Yeah, near near the, the Turkey, near Turkey, I think. Near yeah. Turkey. Oh yes, I see it. Armenia is near Turkey. I see it. Yeah. So yeah, you guys are like kind of like on the same level as like yeah, north, on the northeast, northeast. Yeah, you're far from the equator as well. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So number four. Every time I give my cat a plate of tuna, he ignores it. Every time I give him a plate of salmon, he quickly eats it all. When I feed him beef, he eats a little bit of it, but doesn't seem to love it. What can you infer from this? I give my cat more than one kind of food. Yes. Perfect. So she gives her cat more than one kind of food. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to do one more word meanings from context. All right. And then we're going to read passage and then answer some questions. Okay. So use the context to help you determine the meaning of each highlighted word. So pay more attention to the passage so that you can understand what the word means. All right. First one. No matter where you go, the internet is following you. Almost every portable device is being made with an internet connection. Most new TVs and many other appliances come with internet connections as well. The internet is truly ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. I hate these big words. What does this mean about uh, uh, ubiquitous? That's what we're trying to figure out. Um, from these choices. So I look know at that. the yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. So listen look at the context of the of the passage. No matter where you go, the internet is following you. Almost every portable device is being made with an internet connection. Most new TVs and many other appliances come with internet connections as well. So what does it mean to be you you ubiquitous. You ubiquitous. It's everywhere. everywhere. It's everywhere. Perfect. Perfect. It's everywhere. Exactly. Beep. So, exactly. Perfect. Number two. Speaking rudely to the judges was a was rash behavior. You really hurt your chances of winning. In the above context, what does rash mean? What is the word? What means she? I think with little thought. What does what mean? Thought or consideration. Exactly. Deep. Perfect. What did little you say, Lisa? Cheese. What means cheese? Cheese is uh, food. That, cheese? like, yeah, cheese. Ah. Like, um, <laughs> 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 yeah. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> uh, number three. All right. Some people are always bashing the president, just like others bash the one before him. Wouldn't you think that everyone could find something to praise him for at least once in a while? What does bashing mean in the above selection? Some people are wrong. Oh, hitting cards with a A. What is it? A. Not a, so that's what it means, like, like physically, like actually doing that. But would you really hit the president with a heavy tool? You would probably get like excommunicated, think, or yeah, I don't know, and put in jail. Excommunicated. Right? 
Yeah. Uh, that was really with the priest, though. Okay. Um, it's well, yeah, the jail. Yeah, same meaning is still there, though. Um, so what do you guys think the word is? The meaning is? It's not hitting hard with the heavy tool. Which one do you think it is? Which one? The opposite of parade. Fashion. Hitting hard with the heavy tool. No. Remember, you can't hit the president with a heavy tool. <laughs> That's what it means, literally. <laughs> yeah. Think about it in a figurative sense. What did you say, Kismet? I think uh, about speaking or writing. Uh, Perfect. Perfect, exactly. So you, people speak or write harshly about the president, okay? All right, and number four. Wherever he goes, the esteemed Dr. Sanchez is applauded for his life-saving research. What does esteemed mean? Uh, D, great, uh, great, uh, greatly admired. Perfect, exactly. Greatly admired. Perfect. All right. We have uh, self-esteemed. What did you say? Like, uh, this is uh, the pyramid. Self-esteemed, self-esteemed. Self-esteem means having confidence in yourself. This is our needs, self. Self-esteem. This is our needs in uh, yeah. Maslow Pyramid. Oh, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You study psychology too, I see. Yes. Dale, dale. Yeah, so self -esteem. Yes, yes, yes. I, I take psychology, architectural psychology. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I took a few semesters of psychology in school. Um, yep. Yeah, that's right. So self esteem is the highest, I think it's the highest of all needs in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah. Is Maslow is Maslow the one that's like you need um, food first? Yes, yeah, food, shelter, sh food, shelter. Yeah, bas I, I basic belonging. needs. And security. Yeah. Belongings and steam. I think the uh, the first. Yeah, basic needs to self esteem. Perfect. Yeah. I kind of forgot about that. Okay, perfect. So now we're gonna read this longer passage and answer these five, these eight, nine, ten questions together, okay, for the next 12 minutes of class, all right? So we'll read this together. There's no time limit on it, so don't worry about that, all right? Okay. Kevin, can you give yes. us the, this, this link for the Google uh, paper or your Google file? This. Okay, thank you. Yeah, don't look at the answers, okay? We're going to read this together. Right. Okay, so I'll read this out loud and then we'll answer uh, these questions. These questions over here. Or actually, let's show all the questions. All right, the death car. It was a cold night in September. The rain was drumming on the car roof as George and Marie Winston drove through the empty country roads towards the house of their friends, the Harrisons where they were going to attend a party to celebrate the engagement of Harrison's daughter, Lisa. As they drove, they listened to the local radio station, which is playing classical music. They were about five miles from their destination when the music on the radio was interrupted by a news announcement. The Cheshire Police, Ch Cheshire Police, have issued a serious warning after a man escaped from, Col from Colford Mental Hospital early this morning, early this evening. The man, John Downey, is a murderer who killed six people before he was captured two years ago. He is described as large, very strong, and extremely dangerous. People in the chest higher area are warned to keep their doors and windows locked and to call the police immediately if they see anyone acting strangely. Marie shivered. A crazy killer, and he's out there somewhere? That's scary. 
Don't worry about it, said her husband. We're nearly there now. Anyway, we have more important things to worry about. This car is losing power for some reason. It must be that old problem with the carburetor. If it gets any worse, we'll have to stay at the Harrison's tonight and get it fixed before we travel back tomorrow. As he spoke, the car began to slow down. George pressed the accelerator, but the engine only coughed. Finally, they rolled to a halt as the engine died completely. Just as they stopped, George pulled the car off the road, and it came to rest under a large tree. Blast, said George angrily. Now we'll have to walk in the rain. Well, that'll take us an hour at least, said Marie, and I have my high heel shoes on and my nice clothes on. They'll be ruined. Well, you have to wait while I run to the nearest house and call the Harrisons. Someone can come out and pick us up, said George. But George, have you forgotten what the radio said? There's a homicidal, homicidal maniac out there. You can't leave me alone here. You'll have to hide in the back of the car. Lock all the doors and lie on the floor in the back under, under this blanket. No one will see you. When I come back, I'll knock three times on the door. Then you can get up and open it. Don't open it unless you hear three knocks. George opened the door and slipped out into the rain. He quickly disappeared into the blackness. Marie quickly locked the doors and settled down under the blanket in the back for a long wait. She was frightened and worried, but she was a strong-minded woman. She had not been waiting long, however, when she heard a strange scratching noise. It seemed to be coming from the roof of the car. Marie was terrified. She listened, holding her breath. Then she heard three slow knocks, one after the other, also on the roof of the car. Was it her husband? Should she open the door? Then she heard another knock and another. This is not her, her husband. It was somebody or something else. She was shaking with fear, but she forced herself to lie still. The knocking continued. Bump, 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 bump. Many hours later, as the sun rose, she was still lying there. She had not slept for a moment. The knocking had never stopped all night long. She did not know what to do. Where was George? Why had he not come for her? Suddenly, she heard the sound of three or four vehicles racing quickly down the road. All of them pulled up around her, their tires screeching on the road. At last, someone had come. Marie sat up quickly and looked out the window. The three vehicles were all police cars, and two still had their lights flashing. Several policemen leapt out. One of them rushed towards the car as Marie opened the door. He took her by the hand. Get out of the car and walk with me to the police vehicle, miss. You're safe now. Look straight ahead. Keep looking at the police car. Don't look back. Just don't look back. Something in the way he spoke filled Marie with cold horror. She could not help herself. About ten yards from the police car, she stopped, turned, and looked back at the empty vehicle. George was hanging from the tree above the car, a rope tied around his neck. As the wind blew his body back and forth, his feet were bumping gently on the roof of the car. Bump, 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 bump. Okay? How is that understanding of your body? It's like horror film. <laughs> exactly. So this is a horror story. Exactly. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is a horror story. So how is it understanding? Did you understand what was going on generally? Yes? Perfect. Okay. So in the interest of time, because we have six minutes left, Let's start answering these questions together. Where was where were the Winstons going when this incident happened? Of, um, <clears throat> he was going to, to his uh, friend uh, engagement. Exactly. So, what would you call that? Out of these choices, the par uh, party. A party. Perfect. Exactly. Your daughter was getting engaged. What was the reason for the news announcement on the radio? What was the reason for the news announced on the radio? Mm -hmm. 
I think the first these people including John Remember here, look. Thank you. Exactly. Exactly. So a prisoner, John Downey, had escaped from the mental hospital. Okay. Number three. What did George think was causing the trouble with the car? The accelerator. See? The accelerator? Nope. Try again. Out of these choices. He had no idea. <laughs> he had no idea, or you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Let's look back at the passage. Um, all right. Don't worry about it, said her husband. We're nearly there now. Anyway, we have more important things to worry about. This car is losing power for some reason. It must be that old problem with the carburetor. If it gets any worse, we'll have to stay at the Harrisons, blah, blah, blah. So what do you guys think? A, A, A. Perfect. The carburetor. Number four. Why did he pull the car off the road? Because he... To walk to the nearest house. To walk to the nearest house, thank you. Out of all the choices, you think this one is it? To walk to the nearest house? Yeah. It broke down. Like this one. It broke down. He pulled the car off the road because it broke down. He couldn't leave it in the middle of the road. Alright. Okay, number five. Why did Marie stay in the car when George left? Her clothes weren't suitable for drain. Perfect, exactly. She was wearing nice clothes for the party. Where did George set off to walk to? Where is he where is he going to walk to? Where is he trying to get to? The police is house. The nearest house. Perfect. He wanted to call the Harrisons from the nearest house. Perfect. What made Marie so frightened as she waited in the car? Uh, there was a strange sound coming from the roof. Perfect. A bumping sound. Why did the policeman tell her not to look back when he brought her out of the car? I think he didn't want her to see the body of her husband. Perfect. Hey. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, number nine. Marie says there's a homicidal maniac out, out there. What does homicidal maniac mean? Crazy killer. A crazy, crazy killer. killer. Perfect. And the last one. And several policemen left out. Left. What does let mean? Let mean. That means what? Like, well, I think jump. <laughs> Jumped, exactly. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so we are done for today. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You're right. Um, word. So we are done for today, guys. Um, awesome. So I hope everyone learned today. Yes? Everything was good? Yep. Perfect. Okay. All right, so I'm teaching a class in the next hour, the next hour, yes, at 9 o'clock. Um, so if anyone wants to join that, I'll be back here for that, okay? Thank you. All right, yes, okay. so I'll see all you guys Thank next you. time. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao, bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.